What is up everyone? My name is Will from Ghost Hack and we are back at the second part of how to start a dubstep track. In this uh, part we are going to be working on the basses, making the basses in the drop. In the last bit we did the drums which sound like this. Now I have been thinking about it and there is a possibility that I might change out the kick drum. However, I will have to see what that sounds like when I add the other basses. When I add basses, it may sound awesome and I just think it sounds strange now, but we'll we'll work with it. Now the way I like to split up uh, making the basses and making a bass pattern is all about having, uh, first off, a main bass. You want a main bass that uh, sounds interesting, it sounds cool that you can play a pattern with, whether that be a cool, um, just like actual physical pattern itself, like do 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 do, or if it's like a melodic pattern, like da 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 da, or something like that, you know. And maybe you can mix those up as well. It really depends on the kind of dubstep that you're going for. But uh, I want to have a cool main bass. But there's something that I like to have in pretty much all my drops is I want to have a really heavy hitting first bass. The very first bass that hits, I want to be like super heavy. It's usually like some kind of growly, just like really strong like monstrous like mess or something like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a new pattern, pattern three, and I'm going to go into this uh, space called MDE, which stands for main drop elements. This is just how I do it. And I'm going to load up a serum and see what kind of stuff we got. I think just so we can, you know, keep everything moving, like keep the track moving, I'm going to go through some ghost hack presets. And I think the majority of them are going to be presets that I've made for ghost hack. This is actually part of a preset pack that I'm currently working on for ghost hack, but I think it sounds really, really nice. It's a really juicy growl. And I think I can use it for my first big hit. And I think we'll make this track an E. E is a pretty good uh, E is a pretty good key to have dubstep in because it sounds very very rich in the sub bass region. Now in this channel, I'm just going to cut out the sub bass, which actually the sub bass is getting already cut out because it's routed into the basses, which has a uh, a sub cut. I can actually take that off right now and a tad bit of reverb. It's going into like the basses group, which is also getting side chained. What I want to do here is just do a little bit of fattening up. It doesn't need to be that much fatter. I just want to do a little bit. Now, if we lay our pattern down. Now, clearly we need to edit this uh, modulation a little bit inside of the preset. I want it to go up quicker. I want it to do something like this. There, that's how I like it. I think what I'll actually do to make it even fatter, this does not uh, really change the sound that much, but I'm going to open my uh, patcher here and I'm going to pull up a little preset that I made, which is just a simple fat rack and it just has uh, the frequency split up into a high band, a mid band and a low band. And then we have a soft clipper just doing this on each one. And just these six soft clippers going, you know, twice on each frequency band uh, will make it really, really heavy. <laughs> It's a really heavy growl. Maybe bring this pitch down. Next up, time to use our handy dandy sub, which is a sub I made in Citrus, which is just a sine wave with a few extra harmonics. Sounds very, very nice. And since it's in Citrus, we can do this little FL Studio sub drop right here, so we can go ear. All right, I was scrolling through the next gen presets pack that is also on the Ghost Hack website, and I found this bass. Tesla. It's really, really heavy. I really like how it sounds. I want to play something like this. So like if I were to put down this pattern. Nope. Also, maybe want to put bases in between there. But for right now, I'm just going to route this into 32. It sounds really, really basic right now, but I have to layer more stuff under it and put more stuff over it. So uh, we're also gonna route this through the bases. And I think what I'm gonna try doing just for consistency's sake is kind of copying the stuff that is over on this growl channel and kind of just putting it to the main bass channel as well. Now we have to find bases to fill in those gaps. I think I'm going to start out just uh, putting this bass, Centipede, in there. 
because I feel like it's cool enough that it works really well as a filler base, but it doesn't take away from the main base. So I'm just going to put it in here. It's uh, very basic right now, this whole layout, but we can make it more complicated and interesting later. So let's just route this into its own channel and basically do the same stuff we did to the other sounds. Now I want to add something as a layer to that main uh, melodic bass. What I want to do is add um, a harmer right here and I'm just going to put it in default. Then just make a detune saw. There, a very detuned saw with a little bit of chorus and a high pass filter. I'll also throw a little bit of compression on it. This is going to have to be turned down, but I just want it to layer with the melody. Yeah, already it sounds a lot thicker. So I'm just going to call this main layer and I will just route it right beside the main bass. And maybe add a touch of reverb. What I'm going to do for this little space in here, I'm going to actually take a sample that I have made. Uh, let's take it from Dubstep Sound Arsenal, see what kind of sounds we got in here. I like the way Spaceship sounds. So let's take a bit of that. Let's see, let's chop it off here and then uh, maybe slide it around a bit. And I'm also gonna layer this squelch bass with it right there. Uh, this will sound messy, however, once it's mixed, it should sound pretty good. So right now they're really colliding with each other in big ways, both these right here, so they really need to be mixed together. This one right here, I think I want to be a little more background than the other one. The other one has a cooler tonality in my opinion, so. Let's just make it more background. Let's take away these piercing high ends. I think what would be cool is if we don't continue this bottom one all the way, if we start it over, so it does kind of a double hit. I think that could be pretty interesting. Now with all these layers that are happening right there, I really think this first bass needs a layer too. I think what's happening is the stereo field is inconsistent for some reason. It doesn't play the same way each time. So what I'm going to actually take is a bass that is very stereo. So just this growl right here that I have in the playlist and then I'll make this very stereo, just keep it very stereo and this one will be a little more mono so we have kind of a mono and a stereo layer going. All right, so with all that, we have this little thing in the beginning. And then I want to put like something fast and kind of plucky right here. Maybe like something lasery, we'll see what happens. For right now, I'm gonna try using this. Which is a bass called Viper, which is also from the next gen presets for Serum Pack. So it's gonna do something like this. But I have to post process it because it doesn't really fit in with any of the other sounds. So far, this has just been me really just playing around the sounds and trying to find something cool because I have uh, some big heavy sounds, some filler sounds, then I have the main bass going on, which is kind of carrying the pattern. And then once we get back here, I like to do some fast stuff, get a little more chaotic. And I'll probably do something even crazier over here. And then the whole thing would basically repeat. So for right now, I'm just going to take all of this and repeat it. And for this hit right here, I want something really messy and squelchy. Fortunately, I already have messy and squelchy stuff right here. So let's bring this over. I want to uh, just take a different part of this. I want it to be half as long and a different piece and add sub to it. I think I want this sub to be rising. Let's add a little more plucks here. Actually, I think instead of a bass, I'm gonna take this right here. Which is just a saw wave, but it's just like, it's really simple, but it's really useful, hence the name. There it is. This is just simple stuff to make it sound fat. This doesn't actually affect the sound too much. 
I'm gonna change the drum pattern up a little bit. I'm gonna do something like this. So I want some like crazy glitchy stuff here and I think I know exactly where to get it. I'm currently in the Ghost Hack Black Friday bundle which is currently called the Platinum Bundle on the website and I have these bass loops here and I think I wanna use this one. Cause it has some really glitchy sounds in it. I wanna kinda chop up this loop. This is where I like to use like the bass loops the best. So we have this which I actually lowered it in pitch a little bit cause it actually stretched to fit the time and it, it sounded better. But now I'm going to actually hand pick a one shot to go in this. So uh, let's take base one shots and find something. I rather like this one. Maybe I can use this one instead. It's a little growly or maybe it'll work better. Yeah, it's already very strong. And I think we're just gonna do a little slidey motion with the sub once again, except for this last hit, which is just a straight up E. All right, and now so far, this is just exactly the same thing. I don't think I want it to be playing exactly the same thing, because that's a little boring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take track eight, right click and merge pattern clips. And now it is all one clip. And I'm going to change the pattern up a little bit. First of all, this melodic pattern. It's definitely going down here. Yeah, I like how that sounds. And I'm also going to change up this little plucky pattern too. And I think everything after here, I'm just going to redo. I don't want it to be the same at all. Take these right here. And let's scoot this one aside and let's add sub. I think all of these basses are too loud. The drums aren't punching through hard enough, so I'm just going to bring all of these down. Now I'm starting to feel it a little more. And what's gonna go at the end right here is a drum loop. I'm just gonna take some, uh, some drum loops, just like some drum breaks, and I'm gonna put them right there and create a little drum fill. I'm actually just going to take this one right here and then, which is just a personal drum loop of mine, and then I'm going to stretch it out so it fits the right time. In this case, resample is fine because it doesn't really have a pitch. Then I'm actually gonna get four little snares to go right here. I know there's a snare already hitting in the drum loop, however, those snares are not that powerful, so I need to get some more snares of my own. Let's go back into Dubstep Sound Arsenal and I have this snare. Uh, which I made just for these purposes. So I'll take this in here and then I'll do some uh, just four short hits. Yeah, that sounds really good, especially mixed with this. All right, I made some subtle changes here. I uh, mixed up the rides a little bit and I changed this snare to hit double time and then this third snare to just come in on the last three. So now, so far we have this. I think the last thing I'm going to do before I end the episode is just add a little layer. And what this is going to be is just a little, um, a little pew pew pew, a little laser layer. I just want this. Which you can make this just by running white noise through a filter with a bunch of resonance and moving the cutoff really, really quickly. If you add a bit of bit crushing, you can give it a little more high end. So I think I'll do that. And I'm only gonna have this little uh, pew going on when it's doing the really fast hit. And then uh, we'll also do some little dimension expanding using Faturator. It's all distorting right now, but if we turn the distortion off, we can use just a stereo turbo. So now it's very wide. It's just a really subtle layer. We can even add a little uh, sound goodizer if we want. This is just to keep it from being too bland.
All right, so that is going to wrap it up for this episode. This may have been a little bit longer than the other ones, and these the ones you know ahead of this probably won't be this long. But I just need a little more time to get the drop down because this is really what we have to work with now. We we have the idea of our song, the mood of our song all made and now we can just make everything around it so in the next episode i will be doing the second half of the drop which will be going right here where we will make changes and during that next episode i'll probably add a little more changes to this one as well that's kind of how the songwriting process works but until next time thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video happy producing